Hello everybody. Today we're going to go through a walkthrough of ESM2. This will serve as a general overview on how to navigate, log in, and change users. To start with, we will start off in a non-logged in state. We know we are not logged in because we do not have the parameters tab in light blue up in the top ribbon. In order to log in, we're going to go down to the users tab select a user profile that we have access to that we're going to log into enter the six digit code in order to log in once you have logged in you can see that the parameters tab appears in the top ribbon of the screen there are many things you can do from not while not being logged in but there are some things that you will be required to be logged in to do. For the purposes of this instruction, we are going to start by logging out and I will show you what you can do without being logged in to the HMI and ESM2. Now that I have logged out, you can see that the parameters tab has disappeared. Starting from the engine overview screen, we're just going to do a quick tour of the, H the ESM2 HMI interface. Up in the top left you will see this M01. This is the engine designation number. This is whatever the customer has chosen to call that engine. That is editable when you are logged in from the parameters tab. In the center top there is your engine status. Up here we currently have a engine running code coming through the top ribbon. That will change if there is ever a fault or a shutdown. Next to that is our status bar. Green means that everything is functioning properly through ESM2 on the engine. In the event of a fault, this will turn yellow and a triangle will appear inside of it. In the event of a shutdown, this will turn red and a triangle will also form in the middle of it. Next to the status icon is our RPM and engine load bar. Current engine load will be delayed, displayed in this box. As well as beneath that, there is one bar for each 10% of load. Right now, we are currently below 10% of load. As load increases, you will see the green bar increase up to 100% of load. Again, we are currently in the Visualization tab. We know we are in the Visualization tab because we have orange bars at the top and bottom of our screen. If I clicked over to the Graphing screen, you'll notice green bars appear at the top and bottom. And in the Systems tab, it is representative as purple. Going back to the Visualization tab and running through the features of ESM2. We will start with our engine overview screen. This is kind of a big snapshot of what is going on with the engine. It includes our intake manifold uh, left and right bank, our boost pressures, our reserve left and right bank throttle, pre-filter oil, our oil delta, our crankcase pressure, as well as air fuel readouts, intake temperatures, coolant and oil temperatures, the ambient data coming from our TriCan sensor, miscellaneous set points, as well as the operating hours on the engine. The next screen we will explore is our exhaust and main bearing temperature screen. This screen displays our cylinder exhaust temperatures, our main bearing temperatures, our exhaust temperatures, as well as our calibrations. These are the set limits for alarms and shutdowns. In the governor screen, we will have data that is affected by our governor. We have our engine data, which includes our throttle position command, our throttle position feedback, our engine RPM set points, and the percentage of load. Below that, we have our boost pressures, intake manifold pressure average, as well as our throttle reserve average. The rest of the data on the screen 
represents information that is either a feedback or a feed to from the governor. Here we will see our user overspeed limit, our load inertia, as well as power gen inputs if that is the type of application we have. Once we come to our governor screen, this is where we can read out governor set points as well as feedbacks from the governor. From our start stop screen, we can tell if we have any current alarms, a shutdown, whether the engine is currently running, whether it is in a run stop state, whether there is a user shutdown initiated, an engine lockout initiated, a starter flag, Ignition enable main fuel would both be on as we are in a engine running state. Our start signal, our lube pump, and our customer supplied lube pump. In the bottom of the screen, we also see what our calibrations are set to. Our pre-lube pressure target, our lube time, which is currently set to 30 seconds, our purge time, which is currently set to 2 seconds, our cooldown time, and our post-lube time. These are all user set points that are set in the parameters tab once a user is logged in. As well as miscellaneous set points like pre-lube countdown, cooldown counter, post-lube counter, engine oil pressure, and throttle position feedback. From the engine screen, we're going to go over to our ignition screen. In our engine ignition screen, we can see our current ignition timing in degrees before or after top dead center. In this box, we will be able to see secondary voltages. Secondary voltages are part of IPMD2. If you are still using IPMD on an ESM2 engine, your spark reference number will be shown in this box. In the bottom right, we will be able to see our WKI in use as well as our set WKI and our intake manifold atmospheric pressure average. From our ignition screen, we are going to move over to our air fuel ratio screens. From there, we will be able to see what AFR mode is selected, either pre-catalyst or post-catalyst, where our fuel control valve values are set. Currently, fuel control valve for the left bank is at 50%, and the fuel control valve for the right bank is at 49% as well as our fuel control valve parameters. We will be able to see our pre-catalyst O2 target and our O2 targets for the left bank and the right bank, as well as our post-catalyst O2 set points. We will be able to check our pressures in the top right with our intake manifold and atmospheric pressure average, our pre-catalyst exhaust, our post-catalyst exhaust, and our catalyst delta as well as temperatures for our turbine, pre and post catalysts, and catalyst delta. From the AFR tab, we will go over to the advanced screen. The advanced screen has three possible tabs to select from. We will start with the service tab. In the service tab, you will be able to see real-time values in both temperature and pressure for our sensors. You will also be able to get either a voltage or a ohm reading from that sensor to be able to tell if that sensor is beginning to fail or not. Any reading outside of normal range would indicate a possible wiring or sensor failure. This screen is excellent for troubleshooting a faulty sensor while the engine is running. As well as we will be able to see our set points our load sharing, throttle position commands, and our system voltage, as well as our WKI in use and its set point. Also under the advanced tab is our set points. These are the set points and parameters that we have set for the engines. These parameters can be changed once you are logged in in the parameters tab. For the alarm limits, we can set our coolant temperature alarm limit as well as our shutdown limit. You are only allowed to go in a safe direction when setting limits. 
We also have our oil temperature, intake manifold temperature, low oil pressure, and cylinder exhaust temperatures. Again, these are our alarm limits and these are our shutdown limits. From the set point screen, we are going to go to our PDB screen. PDB stands for Power Distribution Box. In our PDB screen, we will be able to see what our system voltage is, as well as the amp draw of items that are attached to the system. For instance, if we were in a starting sequence, starter 1 would be drawing amperage if it was trying to start. This is also an area that you can use for troubleshooting. If you know that the starter should be engaging, yet you have no amp draw at that current time, you will know that either the starter itself or something in the wiring is faulty. To the right of there, we will also see the amp draw of certain circuits within the end. From there, we will select our cylinders tab, and there we can find out our cylinder specific values. Here on the left, it will tell you what cylinder we are looking at, and we can look at the ignition timing for each cylinder. As well as, on the right, you can see the ignition timing and how it relates to exhaust temperatures and secondary voltages. In the main bearing temperatures, we will see a visual output of our current main bearing temperatures. The final button gives us our firing order in relation to our cylinders from the flywheel of the engine. This is simply a visual representation of what cylinders fire in what order. From here, we are going to go to our graphing screen. We know we are in our graphing screen when the bars at the top and bottom are green. The graphing screen is a powerful tool that we let you see many things that are happening on the engine all at once. If you want to clear up some of this data, all you have to do is go over to the right and uncheck the data you no longer want to see. If you want to drill down to something as specific of, say, the power, we will go through and unselect each of those boxes. You can also close an entire series of boxes with the plus or minus button at that gray bar. As I continue to close, we can drill down finer and finer until only what you want to see is visually on the screen. You can also zoom in or zoom out of the time frame. If I want to look at, say, the past one hour of time on that engine, I simply select one hour, click OK, and now I am looking at an hour snapshot. If I want to look for the last 24 hours, I go through and select the first day, select OK. I can go out quite far with this information, as much as 30 days if I chose to. However, the further you go out, the less detailed the information will be. Simply change the range to go back in. You can also set a specific date and time by using the drop downs on the left and the right. If I wanted to see what was happening on this engine two weeks ago, I simply select that appropriate day. If I want to see more information than just the power line, I simply start rechecking boxes to add in that data. There are many powerful tools within the graphing screen. Next, we will go over to our Systems tab. Our Systems tab is indicated by purple bars on the top and bottom. And in that tab, we will have CPU information, software information, as well as engine information and software identification. Next, we will go into how to log in. To log in, simply go down to the user's box in the lower right hand side of the screen. Select the profile that you would like to log into. Enter the six digit code. And select enter. 
I know I'm logged in because the parameters tab has now appeared. Now, everything else is exactly the same as what we were looking at before. So we're going to go into the parameters tab and see what we can do from there. The best way to describe the parameters tab is to relate it to the visualization tab. The visualization tab gives you a screenshot of what is actually happening, but you can't make any changes to the engine. The parameters tab allows you to set the engine to the set points that you desire. We will go through the parameters tab the same way we went through the visualization tab. Under the engine tab and the same start stop screen, here we have our values that we want to set for those items. If we want to adjust our prelube time from 30 seconds to 60 seconds, we would simply make that change here. We can also adjust our post loop time, our purge time, our cooldown time, and any of the other parameters on this screen. Moving to the governor screen, we can make changes to the governor settings. In the ignition screen, we can only change our WKI. In the AFR screen, we are going to change any of our air fuel ratio settings and set points. Again, you can only make changes in a safe direction. One of the other tools that is in the AFR screen in the parameters tab is our fuel system setup screen. This is similar to ESM. However, all of the steps are now displayed on, the, on a single screen. You can also read our fuel control valve target position and our fuel control valve actual positions for the left and right banks while on this screen and making your changes. Simply follow the steps in order in order to change the regulator setting on your engine. From the advanced tab, we go to our advanced settings. In our advanced settings, we can set our prog ops outputs as well as our offsets for our intake manifold alarm and shutdown offset, our oil pressure alarm and shutdown offset, our coolant temperature alarm and shutdown offset. Again, we can only make changes in a safe direction. Also, in this advanced settings screen, we can reset our power distribution box from the HMI. This is a change from ESM1 where you had to go to the power distribution box itself to reset the PDB. From there we will go to our user shut shutdown screen. This screen will allow us to enable or disable an engine shutdown if a sensor signal is lost to the ECU. For instance, if our oil temperature circuit becomes open, while this is enabled, this will cause an engine shutdown. If it is disabled, it will not cause the engine to shut down. This is a risk reward screen for the engine owner. Disable sensors at your own risk. From there, we will go to our advanced governor screen. Here we can change advanced governor settings. Anytime we make a change to the parameters tab, we have to make sure that we go and save. Once we have clicked save, we will have to confirm the save by clicking the user calibration save box. This will save the change to the engine. Simply changing the values on the screens will not change the values on the engine. You must remember to click save and then click save. Another view for all of this information is the all button on the bottom left. This displays the exact same information from these tabs down here at the bottom simply in a different view. As I select through here you'll notice that the values are the same 
and the options are the same. In the All tab, we can select through and see what the set points are for the engine, as well as make the changes we desire. For instance, the user shutdowns are all exactly the same. However, in this view, you simply have to check or uncheck a box as you choose, as compared to having to toggle a button back and forth. It may be easier to set up the engine from the All button. It is your personal preference how you do it. The next thing we will explore is the alarm button on the lower right hand side of the screen. Clicking the alarm button will bring up the alarms, but first we must set a time and date range that we want to look at. We will use the little clock symbol in the upper right hand side. Here I'm going to look at the last nine days worth of alarms. Here we have a series of shutdowns as well as alarms. Again, alarms are representative by a yellow circle in the upper right hand corner. To investigate a fault, simply select the fault you want to see. From there, select the small PDF symbol in the upper right hand screen and select the appropriate engine. This will bring you to eHelp and a troubleshooting guide for that particular fault code. It will show you where on the engine that fault code could be originating from, where that sensor is plugged in through the rail, what harness to look at at the ECU, as well as the troubleshooting tips for that particular fault. The fault we are looking at is a high oil pressure differential. So we go through step by step in the troubleshooting tips and the remedies on how to remedy that fault. This is a great tool for troubleshooting on the HMI. If we want to look at another fault or shutdown, for instance, here is a shutdown for a user oil pressure circuit. Again, select the PDF icon, select the engine, and again, it will display the information, locations, as well as the troubleshooting tips to solve that issue. If you do not find the information you need to find here and need to reference the manual, the manuals for the engine that that HMI was designed for will be preloaded onto the HMI. Select the Systems tab and then Files in the bottom of the screen. Here we will select the engine information and click the magnifying glass in the upper right to open that manual. Sometimes it can take a second for the manual to load. From there, we will go to the table of contents for that manual. All we have to do is select the information that we want to find. Select that information and it will take you directly there within the manual. If you need to find more information, simply go back up to the table of contents, find the different section that you are interested in, and select that section to go to that part of the manual. Next, we will explore the user button on the bottom right. Selecting the user button allows different profiles to be created and logged in in ESM2. Only the unit's owner can create and delete profiles. To change your user specific settings, all you have to do is be logged in, choose the user specific settings, and then you can adjust how you want to see the information displayed on the HMI while you are logged into it. For instance, right now we have selected a 24 hour clock. We can change that 
to a 12 hour style of format. We can also change whether our outputs are being read in metric or standard. One of the nice things about this is if we wanted to see our power read out in horsepower but our delta offsets displayed in Celsius, we can do that. We no longer are limited to simply metric or non-metric information. After you have made your changes, select OK and those changes will be applied to that profile. No other profiles will be affected. Next we will explore the notes function. You can leave messages and screenshots for the next shift or a different profile if you choose. From this screen we can see what has been read, what has been unread, and we can choose to delete one or all of the messages if we choose. We can also leave a message for ourselves or another user. Notice now we now have two messages here because I just created that message. This is good for saving information for yourself or another operator later. If we decide that those messages are no longer needed, we can go in and simply delete those messages. Going back to the Visualizations tab, rounding out our tour, we will talk about this bottom bar on the screen. This displays our plant information, our date and time, the number of current online users to this HMI, as well as who is logged in to the computer at the time. The forward and back arrows on the upper right of the screen allow us to go backwards up to five screens and then back forwards for easy navigation throughout the system. Next to the navigation arrows is a button that will allow you to exit the Dian software. If you accidentally hit that button, simply reconnect with your user password. Thank you for watching this overview of ESM2.